Welcome to the Growing in Love for Life podcast, where it's all about saving and strengthening your marriage and creating the relationship you really deserve and want to have. And now, from growinginloveforlife.com, relationship and marriage coach and best-selling author, your host, Liam Naden. This is episode 50 of the Growing in Love for Life podcast. Hello everyone, it's Liam Naden here again, and wow, hard to believe we're at, at our milestone 50th episode. Well, I've certainly enjoyed preparing these podcasts and, and bringing this information to you, and I've also found it heartening and humbling, actually, to have received all, all the many emails I have from people who've found the information helpful in saving and strengthening their marriage. And if you're listening, I'm aware, very aware, that your marriage or relationship is probably causing you a lot of pain right now. Perhaps your spouse wants to leave or is telling you they're no longer in love with you. Or perhaps they might have even met someone else. But whatever your situation, I know without a doubt that the right information and support can give you the things you need to not only save your marriage, but to make it better, stronger and happier than it has been in the past. And that's what these podcasts are all about. And by the way, if you really want to quickly get your marriage back on track, I highly recommend that you take a look at my two programs. There's the 7 Day Stop Your Divorce program and the 30 Day Save Your Marriage and Relationship Transformation program. And in these podcasts, I can really only give you a few ideas. I mean, they are ideas that are definitely going to help you for sure. But my programs complain, contain the complete step-by-step -step actions that are proven to work and are very, very effective. So if you like what you hear here, if my ideas resonate with you, then please check out my marriage programs. And all the details are on my website, liamnaden.com. Okay, well today I want to talk about three essential steps or phases that you must go through if you want to save your marriage. Now in all the study I've done of what makes marriages successful or unsuccessful, and in particular what takes a couple from the brink of divorce to actually rebuilding their relationship, I've found that in every single case, the relationship or marriage has gone through three phases. Now this is really interesting because what it means is that, is that it doesn't matter what the specifics of a situation are. It means that success in saving a marriage always follows this particular pattern. And of course, relationships, as I've discovered, really are about patterns. And that's good news for you and your situation, because it means that it doesn't matter what's going on for you at the moment, specifically. I mean, perhaps your husband or your wife has told you they want to end your marriage. They might have said they don't love you anymore. They might have even got involved with someone else, perhaps even having an affair. And they might have already left and you're not having much communication, if any, with them. Perhaps things are very bitter and antagonistic between the two of you. Well, no matter what's happening, these three phases are going to be vital to your success in getting your marriage back together. And I'm not only going to tell you what the phases are, I'm going to show you how you can effectively apply them to your situation and make these phases work for you. All right, well, just before we get into the three phases, I think it's important to realize why it's necessary to see that there are actually distinct phases in saving a marriage or relationship. You know, there are many people who contact me, and they're quite frankly looking for a miracle to happen. And that's understandable. I mean, they just want their husband or their wife back. They want things to go back to the way they were when they were happy. And while positive things can happen quickly, it really isn't that helpful to expect a miracle to happen overnight. Now, if you want to save your marriage, you're going to need to do a few things, because otherwise it's simply not going to happen. And in fact, you need four things, I believe, to save your marriage. The first thing you need is you need a plan. Now, a plan is not vague hope or wishful thinking. A plan is a methodical system with a defined set of steps arranged in order to take you from where you are to where you want to be. To your goal, in other words, which obviously, in this case, 
is a happy, loving marriage with your spouse. So that's the first thing you need. Now the second thing you need, in addition to a plan, is you need the right plan. Now this seems obvious as well, doesn't it? But you need a plan that is going to work for you. And that's what my programs are. They're definite steps that are proven to work. So it's no good just having any plan. You need to pick the right plan. And the third thing you need is you need to implement the plan. So th this means you need to work it. You know, Once you have a plan and it's the right one, it's one that will work, nothing is going to happen if you don't do anything with it. And sometimes that might involve doing things that are new or uncomfortable. In fact, it probably will. But if you really want what you are seeking, if you really want to save your marriage, then you need to tell yourself that despite all your fears and doubts, whatever plan you've chosen, you're going to take action. And you're going to take a lot of action and just go for it. And the fourth thing you need, and this is just as important as the other three, is that you need persistence. You need determination and stamina. You know, some of, or even many of the things you do might not go as you expect. They might not go right the first time. They might not even go right the second time you try it. And some of the things that happen to you might even be the opposite of what you want or expect. But this is the nature of achieving anything in life, including saving your marriage. It's about not giving up. It's not taking no for an answer. Now, of course, this isn't easy to do, which is why many if not most people, actually give up on anything, not just saving their marriage. But although it isn't easy to do, it is simple. So get the right plan, take action, and keep taking action, modifying it if necessary, until you get the result you want. That's it. All right, well, with that in mind, let's have a look now at the three phases of saving your marriage. And these three phases are actually, in essence, a plan. So as we go through, I encourage you to take notes, and with each new idea or concept, ask yourself this question. What can I do, and what will I do, to implement this part of the plan right now? So what can I do, and what will I do to implement this part of the plan right now? And by the way, if you're a Growing in Love for Life subscriber, you will find a worksheet in the members area that goes along with this podcast which summarizes all the steps and which you can download and use and I really encourage you to to do that. All right so let's begin and look at the first of the three phases that you must go through to save your marriage and that phase, phase number one, is removing all negativity. Okay now before you dismiss this as unrealistic let me explain what I mean by this and how you can achieve it no matter how negative your own situation might appear at the moment. You know, many people who are facing the end of their marriage want to know the answer to one question, and that is simply, how do I get my husband or wife to love me again? I mean, they say to me, you know, after all, I still love them. I just want them to respond to my love by loving me back. If they just do that, everything could start to get back on track in our marriage. And that's a very valid sort of feeling and, and maybe you have that feeling as well but here's the truth you're never going to be able to rebuild love with your spouse if there's a wall of negativity between you now how you do this how you remove the negativity negativity specifically is something I go into great detail about in my programs but I want you to think about this you can never create anything positive from something negative Really think about that statement. You can never create anything positive from something negative. The negative only brings more negative. So you need to stop all, and I mean all, negative thoughts, feelings and actions. Right now. <laughs> now hang in with me here because I hear you saying, well, that's all very well for you to say, but you don't understand my situation. There's just too much hurt there between my spouse and me. I've done terrible things. They've done terrible things. No matter what I do, they won't forgive me. They can't for forgive me, and I can't or won't forgive them. And you might be even using the if word. We could get rid of the negativity if he or she would stop arguing, if they would cooperate, if they would work on our marriage, if they would stop having an affair. And you know, 
I think the word if stands for the two letters I and F. They actually stand for something, and that is irrelevant fact. Because these things might be happening or have happened, all the things you're saying if about, they may be facts. But they are actually irrelevant to your situation. Irrelevant, yes, and you'll begin to see why as we go along. So stick with me here, and now we need to look at how do you remove all the negativity, no matter what's happening. Well, here I'm going to give you four ways. There are more, but here are four of the most effective ways that you can use straight away and start to see some immediate and, of course, positive results. All right, well, the first way to remove negativity is to learn some negativity-beating techniques. You know, some of the negativity in your relationship with your spouse may be bound up with some very deep-seated issues. I'm not denying that. But there have been huge advances in the area of human psychology, and there are now methods available to help you get rid of deep-seated negativities in ways that are a lot simpler and easier than they used to be. Now, I use a number of these in my, save, in my Stop Your Divorce and Save Your Marriage programs, especially the 30-Day Save Your Marriage program. But whatever you do, make a commitment to yourself and your marriage to look into ways, professional ways, that are going to help you more easily get rid of negativity from your mindset. It won't just help your marriage, it will help your life. Alright, the second way to get rid of negativity is simply to make a promise to yourself that no matter what happens, you are not going to be negative. Now this sounds so basic, so simple. You probably have all sorts of reasons why you feel ne your negativity is justified. But seriously, if you simply decide that you're not going to be negative, no matter what the consequences that you think might result, and if you stick with it, no matter how difficult it may seem, you'll not only find that things often get better than you expect, but you'll also get better yourself at not being negative the more you try this. Now, if you think this is glib or simplistic, I urge you, don't judge this idea until you try it, because you will be positively surprised. No pun intended. All right, the third way to remove negativity from your marriage situation and your life is this. In any given situation, before you react, when you feel the urge to, to react, stop and ask yourself this question. What should I do or not do right now to make sure I don't add negativity to the situation? So just take a deep breath, stop, and concentrate on this question, no matter what's going on. Ask yourself, what should I do or not do right now to make sure I don't add negativity to the situation? Right, so no matter what's going on around you, you will have the time to ask this question, and you'll get the answer and it's going to make a major difference. Again, a simple idea, but very powerful. And the fourth way to eliminate negativity is, if all else fails in any given situation, simply remove yourself from that situation and wait. You know, often the best response to something is none at all. I mean, the Tao says, the true warrior is the one who walks away. So you don't have to stay there and fight. You don't have to get the last word. You don't have to try to stop your spouse from being upset. You don't even have to point out to them what they should do or not do. You don't have to do anything. And you shouldn't do anything that you know in your gut is only going to make things worse or more negative. So try it. Try walking away if you don't know what else to do or if you feel yourself being drawn into negativity. This is very effective, because essentially you're sending the message to your spouse and to yourself that being negative is not going to help and you're simply not going to do it anymore. Period. So there are four ways to begin to remove negativity, and I really encourage you, because it is the first essential phase, is to commit to removing negativity. Keep reminding yourself that nothing positive is ever going to happen as a result of negative thoughts, feelings, or actions. I mean, it's simply a law of nature in actual fact. And once your spouse knows and feels that negativity is no longer a part of their or your relationship toolbox, if you like, it's going to fall away and you'll be ready for phase number two, which, of course, 
is a lot more positive. <laughs> Alright, so phase number two is creating respect. Now this is such a vital phase, but it's one that very few people seem to be aware of, and even fewer ever really apply effectively. And it's, also, it's almost the missing link, if you like. You know, many people say to me something like, Hey Liam, I've worked really hard to remove all the negativity between my wife or husband and me. And we're not fighting anymore, we're not arguing, and there are even some positive feelings starting to happen between us. But he or she is still telling me they don't love me and they don't want to work on rebuilding our marriage. So I, although I can feel they're no longer hostile, they're not open to me either. And I'm stuck. What do I do? Well, this is where phase number two, creating respect, comes in. Because the truth is, before you can rebuild love, you need to rebuild respect. And I say rebuild because I'm pretty sure that respect was a very important component of your relationship with your spouse when things were going well between you. Alright, so let's look at this respect thing. And I think the first thing we need to do, of course, is really understand what respect actually is. Because, to be honest, even if you are saying you do respect your spouse, I can pretty well guarantee that you aren't to the level you need to if you want your marriage to be saved. Now, interestingly, the dictionary has two very good definitions of the word respect, and they're very applicable here. So, what are they? Well, the first definition of respect from the dictionary is, respect is a feeling of deep admiration for someone or something elicited by their abilities, qualities, or achievements. I'll repeat that. Respect is a feeling of deep admiration for someone or something elicited by their abilities, qualities, or achievements. So here are two questions to ask yourself about it that come out of this. And of course, be really honest with your answers. They're only here for your benefit. And write down your answers on the worksheet that comes with us. So question number one, what abilities, qualities, and achievements of my spouse do I deeply admire? I'll repeat that again. What abilities, qualities and achievements of my spouse do I really and deeply admire? Great question. And I come up with as long a list as you can. The second question, what abilities, qualities and achievements of myself do I deeply admire? I'll repeat that. What abilities, qualities and achievements of myself do I really deeply admire? Now that second question might surprise you a little, but it's actually just as important as the first question. And while we could spend a whole podcast episode, and maybe one day we will, spend a whole episode talking about the importance of how you see yourself and your self-esteem, it's a vital aspect of a healthy relationship. I mean, after all, if you're worthy of having someone else love you, which I can assure you that you are, then you're certainly worthy of having you love yourself. This is so important. So spend some time thinking about and answering those two questions, and then we can have also have a look at the second dictionary definition of the word respect, which is this. Respect is due regard for the feelings, wishes, or rights of others. Respect is due regard for the feelings, wishes, or rights of others. Now this is something that many people get tripped up by when they're trying to save their marriage. And by not really applying this in the right way, I think it's one of the main contributors to marriage failure. So let's look at this, and we'll start by me asking you this question. Do you truly respect all, and I mean all, of the feelings, wishes, and rights of your spouse, irrespective of how you feel about them? Let me ask you that again. Do you truly respect all of the feelings, wishes, and rights of your spouse, irrespective of how you feel about them? So, how about their feelings, wishes, and rights to want to leave your marriage? How about their feelings that they don't love you anymore? How about their wish to have an affair or get involved with someone else? Now, accepting all of these is not going to be easy. In fact, it's probably going to be very painful. And you might be feeling very uncomfortable, angry, indignant, or hurt right now by me saying these things to you. 
but it is the truth, and I'm sure that on a deep level you know that it is, which is one of the reasons you're uncomfortable hearing it. Because true respect, which is the vital second phase in saving your marriage, is having, quote, due regard for all the feelings, wishes, and rights of your spouse. So what does this mean in practice? Well, do you accept their thoughts, feelings, and actions, or do you show them your opposition to those thoughts, feelings, and actions? Which, of course, is the opposite of respect, isn't it? Do you disrespect them by getting upset with them, by arguing with them, by threatening them, or trying to change their mind about their thoughts, feelings, and actions? and their own feelings, wishes, and rights. Now, I go into a lot more detail about how to create respect in my seven-day Stop Your Divorce program, but I can assure you of this. You're going to see a complete change of attitude from your spouse when, and only when, they begin to feel that you truly respect them and respect their right to feel, think, and act in ways that they believe are right for them. But the good news is, more good news, once you truly respect them, they're going to start respecting you. And this, trust me, this is exactly what will happen. And all of this, when you finally start to build some respect between the two of you, this leads on to phase number three. And phase number three is creating positive feelings and emotions. Alright, so once you have, number one, removed the negativity which is, of course, all the reasons why your spouse wouldn't want to stay married to you or at least stay open to working with you on rebuilding your marriage. And two, you've created a foundation of mutual respect between the two of you. You're ready for phase three, which is opening the door for good feelings to flow. And this is where all these feelings and positive emotions of affection, trust, warmth and understanding can grow and develop further and become intimacy and love. Now, of course, when you get to phase three, there's still a lot of work to be done. But the good news is that in this phase, the work, so-called, is both positive and increasingly enjoyable and easy. Because you and your spouse are on the same side in this phase. You're in alignment. You're wanting the same things. And, you've, and this is a life based on respect and appreciation and without negativity. And the truth is, all any of us want in a relationship and our life is to feel good, respected and loved, and you've arrived there in phase number three. So when you get to phase three, here are three important questions to ask yourself and to work on continually. And actually, there's, these are some of the most rewarding questions you can ask yourself, both for you and for your relationship. So the first question is, when you're at phase three, what tools and strategies can I learn to improve our relationship in the areas of communication, intimacy, alignment, and love. Now, you know, it's a strange thing about relationships, and I've talked about this many times in the past, but this is one of the most important areas of our life, and it's certainly going to have more of an impact on our happiness than virtually any other area of our life. Yet we're simply not taught through our education system how to create, how to build, and how to maintain a healthy relationship. So if you want to be in control of your marriage then and you want to have a, put it on the right track, you simply must educate yourself on how to do it. You're going to have to invest some time and effort in learning how to make your marriage better and how to fix things when they go wrong. And of course I've said before this is what my programs are about, but this is also what these podcasts are about. And I really commend you for taking that step and becoming a growing in love for life subscriber and investing in your marriage by developing your skills. But make sure you keep going. There's more to learn. Commit when you're in phase three never to stop learning. Alright, the second question when you're in phase three, how can I make my spouse and myself feel good in this moment? You know, you, you want to know the secret to a great life and a great marriage? Even a marriage that's falling apart? learn how to make you and your spouse feel good right now. That really is all there is to it. We all want to feel good right now and in every moment. And if you can do this for your spouse and for yourself, you're going to have a great marriage and a marriage that neither of you is ever going to want to leave. And the third question, what can we both do to create an even better life 
in the future. Now this is all about having goals, about having shared interests, a common outlook. And I've talked about this in previous podcast episodes, but having a future to look forward to together is going to be a major factor in helping you enjoy your time together right now and build an even better marriage as you move forward. Okay, so there they are. These are the three essential phases of saving your marriage. And not only of saving it, but making it stronger and better than you can imagine. Now, I hope you'll use the information here to help you do that for yourself. So please make sure you answer the questions and apply this information, and I'm sure you will see a big difference. And remember, if your situation is urgent, if you want to want to go deeper, we want more help in saving and improving your marriage, please have a look at my two programs on my website, my 7-Day Stop Your Divorce program, my 30-Day Relationship Transformation Save Your Marriage program. They've both got proven strategies in a lot more detail that will really help you create the marriage you want and deserve. So I'm really looking forward to sharing more ideas with you next time in the next podcast. Thanks for joining me. All the best to you, and bye for now.